What's up, everybody, and welcome back. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch our videos. And today's video is going to be another game diplomacy video um, tutorial. And today we're going to focus on how to assign an emperor and assign imperial positions to maintain peace within your state. Okay. Um, you might be noticing I'm in the same car and wearing the same shirt that I was in my flag rule video. That's because it occurred to me that this is an important topic. And since I have the time, let me bang out this video before I go home as well. Um, it's not that complicated and it can be done relatively quick. So let's get on with it and get this video out of the way. Like I have said in several, several videos, it is of the utmost importance that you have a peaceful, unified state, that everybody in the state considers the entire state their family, not just their alliance, because the whole point of the game is not to be the strongest player in your state, not to be the strongest alliance in your state. The point of the game is to be the strongest state in the entire game. So you must have peace. You must have unity, okay? Now, one thing that happens in a lot of states, even those that are relatively peaceful, is each Friday, there's the battle for the throne, you know? And everybody wants to control the throne, and they're they're warring each week. If you've already got Clash of Province or Reign of Chaos going on, and you're still warring each week for that throne, man, that's a dumb thing to do. Because if you're warring with people within your own state just to get that throne, you're taking people's troops, you're killing the troops, you're taking their resources, and you're preventing your most valuable players from growing. All right? So here's how you solve all that, okay? First off, the emperor should always, unless it's a warm-up week, during warm-up week, you can, uh, which is the week's, that you're not actually being pitted against another state. It's actually more of an internal challenge. Everything's the same. Monday is um, gather day, you know, and so forth. Everything's the same, but you're not in competition with another state, which means there's not, there's not going to be a kill event and a war at the end of the week. So you might reward uh, a member of your state that, uh, you know, has shown the most improvement or did something really diplomatic to keep the peace or, you know, got the highest score on a particular day, you know, on a warm up week, you might want to give the emperor position to somebody, you know, um, as a reward. But during normal COP weeks and normal weeks, the emperor should always, always, always be the strongest player in your state. And that's because there are buffs that come with being the emperor. Uh, and those buffs are extremely important. When you're having ROC, Reign of Chaos, and you're at war with another alliance, you want to make sure that the strongest player in your state becomes even stronger. So your emperor, no matter what alliance... Um, obviously, the emperor has to be in the alliance that's holding the throne, but um, the emperor in general should always be your strongest player, hands down. There should be no discussion about that, none whatsoever. Someone can be the emperor, but not necessarily be the main shot caller of the entire state. It's just uh, basically what the emperor is, is just a position that gives a player a bunch of buffs. You know, they have some extra abilities, sure. Administrative abilities, sure. But the main point is to get those buffs, those extra percentages. Um, and that's what that's for. So it shouldn't even be a discussion about who the emperor should be. Your state's absolute strongest player should be the emperor. It's not about ruling the state. The emperor isn't necessarily the one that, you know, this is the way it is. My laws, my rules, hands down. It's not like it's real world imperial stuff. It's just a title. It's just a position that gives a particular player 
certain buffs and advantages and perks, which should be given to the person that's the strongest in your state so they can do more for the state and help everyone in the state even better because they're already so strong. Give the strongest player the position of emperor so that they can get those buffs. You can still have a council of, let's say, the top three R fives, you know, can still be in charge and make the rules in the state. Or if your state just has one main shot caller, sure, he can still do that. The R5 and the leader of the number one alliance doesn't need to be emperor. In fact, he shouldn't be emperor unless he is the strongest player in the state. Okay? Now, another way to keep peace in the state so you're not warring with each other every Friday for the throne is there are imperial positions. You know, there's the treasurer and what have you. In the center of the map, there's the palace. And then after the battle for the throne ends, there are these structures that you'll see surrounding the uh, the palace. And that's where you send your troops to do national quest and all that. Each one of those positions, imperial positions, have certain perks and benefits, you know, uh, administrative duties. Um, but to keep the peace, you don't necessarily have to have everybody, the, em- the emperor and all the imperial positions, don't necessarily have to go to the alliance that's holding the throne. You know, you can have the number one alliance that has the strongest player in the state. Let's say you just let them get the throne. Just, just let them get the throne. Okay. That way, the strongest player in the state can have the emperor position and get those special buffs to defend everyone better. And then you assign the imperial positions to, diplomatically, to either the R5s or key players of people in other alliances. So, for instance, I'm in G97, and let's say we have uh, Thunderstruck. I think he's right now something like 200 million power, okay? I don't necessarily know if he is the strongest player in our state because he might not have as strong of heroes as, let's say, um, Amir or Ahmed um, or Farquaad. He just has the highest power. Doesn't necessarily mean he is the strongest, but let's just say for this example, Thunderstruck is the absolute strongest player in the state. Since G97 holds the, the the throne our leader our our five will assign thunderstruck the emperor position so that way our strongest player in the state has those extra buffs because he's the emperor then what you do is you assign the different imperial positions to let's say the r5 of the alliance axk Um, the R5 or one of the important R4s of the Alliance um, RIO, you know, and you rotate each week, all right? So your strongest alliance, which should have the absolute strongest player in the state, you should just give them the throne. Don't war with each other because otherwise you're just killing people's troops and you're making the state weaker. You know, you shouldn't be warring with each other. Allow the strongest alliance with the strongest player to just have the throne. That way, the strongest player in your state can get the emperor position and get those extra perks and those extra buffs to make them even stronger. And then to keep things diplomatic and peaceful, assign the imperial positions to various key members of the other top alliances and have them rotate. So each week, the queen changes. The queen might be, you know, this player, this R4 from the alliance that holds the throne. The treasurer is the R5 of the number two alliance. And one of the other positions is either an R5 or the R4 of another top alliance. And you rotate that each week. So that way, all the top alliances get to have a say, have administrative duties, certain perks and privileges 
um, that come along with the imperial positions and they rotate because like I said in summary, the emperor should always be the strongest player. The emperor should not be the R5 of the strongest alliance just because they're the leader. That's ridiculous. The emperor should always be the strongest player in the state and to keep peace, give imperial positions to key members of other top alliances. That way, everyone feels appreciated. They all get a certain perk and a benefit in some, you know, leadership administrative duties. And you rotate that each week. You might even be able to rotate the throne each week. You know, if you know, you might have the throne for this week and have your strongest player, your strongest member have the emperor title for the perks and buffs. And then next week you diplomatically say, OK, you know what? Alliance number two, it's your turn. Go ahead. You have the throne. Um, just make sure, you know, 30 percent of the uh, imperial positions are assigned to our people. And then when we have the throne, we'll make sure that 30% of the imperial positions are given to, you know, people in your alliance, you know, and you rotate and you keep the peace because you should not be warring every single week for that throne. That is the dumbest thing. It's so stupid. Do not do it. So in summary, that's how you keep the peace in your state. That's how you assign who's going to be emperor. And that's how you rotate and make sure everything stays stable and you have good diplomatic relations between the, the key alliances in your state. So I'll just repeat it one last time just to make sure it's clear. The emperor of your state should not be the R5 of the top alliance in your state. That's not the goal. The emperor, without question, should always be given to the strongest player in your state because the emperor position gives really good buffs and perks. And then to maintain peace and balance and diplomacy in your state, the alliance that holds the throne not only gives the emperor position to the strongest player, but dishes out the imperial positions to different key members of other alliances, other top alliances. So that way all the key alliances have a say, have administrative duties. The other thing is do not use the debuffs, all right? <clears throat> Unless you have an extremely rogue player, like somebody that like just doesn't care is just hanging around the state, attacking whoever they want, you know, and they're just causing a disturbance, you know, they might be a really high level, really powerful, and they're really hard to keep in check, you know, they're waiting until people are sleeping, and they go and they attack the castles, take the resources, and then they bubble up, you can't really use the black dragon, because that doesn't take their resources and stuff, you know, that just zeroes their castle, and they end up somewhere else, but you know, how do you punish that person and make them weaker? Well, you might want to use a debuff on them. Make them the, the donkey or something. The donkey position or the jester. One of the debuff positions. But outside of that, don't debuff any member of your state. Just because you're the ruling alliance that holds the throne and your strongest player happens to be the emperor. Don't take it out on other alliances in your state just because you have the power. Don't use debuffs on any member of your state. You should only be giving out the buffs. Assign imperial positions to, you know, either evenly or a percentage of the, the imperial positions go to other members of the other top alliances. And do not assign debuff positions to members of your state. Because all you're going to do is just make your state weaker. If you make it so that this, you know, one player gets, you know, minus 20% in resistance and might just because you don't like the guy come on man that's ridiculous that carries animosity you know don't do it unless it's a rogue player that just does their own thing causes problems just attacks people sneakily when they're sleeping all right maybe give him a debuff but outside of that try to find other diplomatic ways to you know to keep 
players towing the line. Don't use debuffs because if you're debuffing members of your own state, you're debuffing your state. And especially during Reign of Chaos, you want the other alliances in your state to win. When they go to war, you want to help them. One way to not help them is by making one of their players have a minus 20% in resistance or might. That's stupid. Don't do it. So make the emperor the strongest player in the state. Give the imperial positions to key members of the top alliances, not just the alliance that's holding the throne. And do not use the debuffs on any member of your state. I think that pretty much covers that whole topic about how to keep peace The point of not going to war every Friday for the throne, how to assign the emperor, and how to keep peace by assigning imperial positions to multiple alliances. Um, Let's call that the end of the video. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments uh, section below. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, smash that notification bell, check out some of my other playlists, and that's it. Have a good one. Bye.